The Last of Us Episode 7 is finally here, so let's talk about it. Tell me to look for the light and I'll break your jaw. In order to cover the full scope of this show, we have to cover some spoilers, so you've been warned. So, if you haven't seen the episode, make sure you like the video, subscribe with the naughty bell if you're new, check out these awesome videos or playlists from my channel while you're at it, and then come back once you're ready. Three, two, one, let's go! This better be good. The main theme of this episode is Ellie trying to establish a rationale for why she should go the extra mile to keep Joel alive. We see a beautiful moment of hesitation where she actually has to think, wow, am I willing to risk everything in order to save Joel? And that is where we get our very first flashback from the perspective of Ellie. I want to call this episode Ferris Bueller's Ride Through the Last of Us, because that's the question we're trying to answer. What does it mean to be a teenager during the apocalypse? We are doing that by exploring Ellie's relationship to Riley. We've heard about her before at this point in the show, but we haven't really seen her at all. In the show, Riley's being played by Storm Reed, which you might have known from Euphoria, A Wrinkle in Time, or even her latest movie, Missing. She delivers an outstanding performance because Riley herself is meant to be the one that motivates Ellie to become tougher. <laughs> They were both raised in a military training camp within the QZ, in this case for Boston. And it is through that journey of seeing Riley run away from the QZ and then come back in order to help Ellie realize that Fedra actually sucks that we get to see a beautiful moment of synergy. So, what do you think? Neil Druckmann and Craig Mason force us to embrace the beauty inside the chaos. Remember, Ellie is an outcast even in the military camp. Riley was her best friend and she decided to leave for over three weeks to do God knows what and she thought she was gone. We end up learning that Riley decided to join the Fireflies. You're a Firefly? Jesus! which directly conflicts with what Ellie knows to be as normal. At this point, she's not fitting in, so she has to find some way to stand out in order to make herself useful for the QZ. But then she gets the crazy visit from Riley and realizes, wow, my friend is actually alive. I thought it would work better. We get to see how much Riley means to her, both as a best friend and a possible romantic partner. And this is where we get to see a beautiful moment of teenager bliss. You remember when I mentioned Ferris Bueller? Yeah, they're basically just escaping the QZ in order to have some moment of levity and peace in the mall. Just like with all the propaganda that Fedor tries to put out, they have said that the mall is off limits because it is full of infected. And Riley uses this opportunity to teach Ellie a valuable lesson about living in the moment and cherishing the small moments of freedom. The moment where she turns on the lights and you see Ellie marveling at what could have been a sense of normalcy in a mall just like any other teenager was beautiful. And then we get to see her relish in small moments of joy, like that moment in the electric stairs. Escalator. Where you get to see her go down the stairs for the first time and be like, this is ridiculous. But my favorite moment is obviously the arcade. Specifically because we get to see an in-episode reference to something from the past that Ellie has no idea what it means. This is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. She has a poster of Mortal Kombat 2 in her military dorm. But thanks to Riley, she's able to escape this false sense of safety where nothing is really real, go to the mall with the risks associated with that, and actually get the chance to play the game for herself. After that, we get to see moments of beauty. That's beautiful, man. And obviously loss, as we realize that Riley is actually doing this as a goodbye gift. She is going to be moving to the Atlanta QZ and is leaving Boston forever. She wants, obviously, to take Ellie with her, but Ellie's not fully convinced that joining the Fireflies is the right way to save the world. This dichotomy of figuring out who is in the wrong and who is in the right is absolutely tearing at the seams of their relationship. And even in the moment where we think that Ellie is absolutely going to say just goodbye to Riley and move on with her life, we get to see her come back for a beautiful little moment. That's beautiful, man. Finally, in a moment modeled straight after the game, Ellie tells Riley to not go, officially confessing her feelings for her and sealing it with a beautiful kiss. That moment of catharsis where we get to see that Ellie and Riley's feelings for each other are finally being validated is just beautiful to watch. An innocent expression of love right in the middle of the apocalypse, which seems to be a trend considering the episode that we saw with Bill and Frank. But obviously in this show, nothing lasts forever. Not not even the good moments. That's beautiful, man. As quickly as we see Riley and Ellie embrace, that possible journey of love gets taken away from them. Because unbeknownst to them, one of the infected is still in the mall and goes full force to attack them at the Halloween shop. A final stand in which they end up victorious, but end up losing in the end as both of them 
are bitten. This is the crossroads thematically between Riley and Ellie. Riley has already experienced loss at this point because of her family's deaths. So unlike Ellie, who has officially gone ballistic, cussing, and breaking everything that she can see in the store, there's more stuff under there you can break. Riley is calm, seemingly looking to enjoy the final moments of sanity that she is going to have with her friend Ellie. That final decision that they both make to ride it out and not give up on life or each other, even for however little time they may have left together, is beautifully romantic. Besides this being the moment that we actually get to see how Ellie got bit, we also get to experience Ellie care for somebody and experience loss for the first time. Which, funny enough, ends up being the catalyst for Ellie Ellie to save her new surrogate father Joel in the future. This is a turning point in Ellie and Joel's relationship. Joel is badly wounded and she could easily just run for herself and try to go north back to Tommy's camp. But just as Riley told her, she is not going to give up and she's willing to go the extra mile in order to help Joel. Up until this point, Joel has had to take care of her, but in this moment of weakness, she realizes that she needs to stand up and deliver the favor back to him. All of these moments of catharsis and reference to the past that help inform the decisions that our characters make in the future are expertly put up by Craig Mazin and Neil Druckmann. I don't think the episode was perfect. A lot of people online are criticizing the episode for not having enough action and changing too much of the story that we saw in the games. Won't somebody please think of the children? On my end, I think what could have been done better in this episode is maybe show a little bit more of the hopeless situation that Ellie and Riley are going through like they did with Henry and Sam. I don't necessarily mean watching Riley go full infected, but getting the chance to see that terrible moment of realization where Ellie realizes I'm going to be fine, but Riley is going to perish would have been great to see as well. Yes, leaving it up to the imagination also works, but this one could have added a little bit more context. So with all that said, these are the three biggest lessons that we got from episode seven of The Last of Us. Number one, the showrunners are masters of tension. Even in the moments of levity where we get to see our characters enjoy some sense of normalcy in this chaotic world, there is always an element of danger that pays off in the end. It's great. From what we've seen now by this point in the show and in the post-episode featurettes, Craig and Neil have thought about using the show as a vehicle to add context to the most important aspects of the games. Whether that changes the messaging for better or worse, that is up to you. Number two, the story beats are all going to hit extremely hard. Even if you've played the games, you know that the major action set pieces lead to gut-wrenching moments. That's true and each section where some of our favorite characters have to make some hard decisions or have a deep realization are going to leave us heartbroken. In this case, we see that through a moment of hesitation where Ellie is able to look back at her adventure with Riley that ended up in not so great terms to use it as fuel for not giving up on Joel. Regardless of how bleak the situation might look, Ellie is willing to go the extra mile to save Joel, who is the only person that she's cared about since Riley was alive. And number three, the production value is still there. When it comes to the production design, the quality and execution of the sets and the prosthetics for the infected, as well as the scale from a cinematography standpoint, the attention to detail makes this project stand out among its peers, even in the episodes where action isn't the priority. So with that, I'm going to give this episode a solid B. The next episode drops on HBO Max at 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central, and 9 p.m. Eastern next Sunday, March 5th. So make sure you subscribe with the Naughty Bell on so you can get an instant notification once episode 8 drops because I'm going to be covering every single nook and cranny of that bad boy once it drops. As always, I hope you had fun, like the video if you learned something new, and I'll see you on the next one.